beautiful clothing material. Those are called design stations. They have the necessary computer-aided design tools for image making. A giant logo of Mr. Arnett's. Wow, very impressive. It's an advertisement flyer. It's an advertisement for a laser hair removing device, which can be used wet or dry. It's hard to imagine people using sticky wax in order to remove unwanted hair. Ouch. Hi, I'm Senior Officer Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. I was looking for Mr. Arnett. Mr. Arnett is not available at this moment? And you are? Oh, my name is Gladys Castle, and I'm Mr. Arnett's assistant. Well, Miss Castle, I'm here for official business, and I need to talk to Mr. Arnett. As I told you, he is not available right now. Would you like to make an appointment for a later time? No. Let me remind you that I am a peace officer on official business. I suggest you tell Mr. Arnett to make time for me. Are you an employee of the GPSN? Yes, I told you that I was. Just wanted to make sure. Well, I regret to inform you that you cannot see Mr. Arnett even for official business unless he agrees to see you. And he specifically instructed me not to disturb him for anything. He has no choice. This involves an active case. It does not matter, Officer Wallace. You see, the World Class Image Makers Association, otherwise known as WEMA, the organization that Mr. Arnett is affiliated with, has a special agreement with the GPSN. According to this agreement, a GPSN officer cannot insist on meeting a senior member of WEMA. That sounds like bullshit to me. Get out of my way. I need to talk to him. I'm going to disregard your foul language at this time, but if you insist on seeing Mr. Arnett, I'm going to have to report you to WEMA, and they will directly deal with your immediate supervisor at the GPSN. I suggest you check your company rules. I see. You're serious. I would like to make an appointment with Mr. Arnett. And is this about an image makeover? You know I'm not here for an image makeover. Oh, but you should be, Officer Wallace. I can tell. You desperately need a new image. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Oh, no. The compliments come after our awesome image makeovers. Shall I sign you up for one? I don't wish to have an image makeover. I merely wish to speak to Mr. Arnett. In that case, let me check the appointment database. Hmm. He is available for you on Monday, four weeks from now. But I cannot wait four weeks. Please inform him that this is very urgent. It involves a former client of his. I just cannot disturb him, Officer Wallace. Do you want to make an appointment? All right. All right, but please tell me if there's an opening available sooner. Of course I will. Thank you. Is there no respect for peace officers in our society? She didn't even take me seriously. Hello, Ms. Lucan. This is Peace Officer Phoenix Wallace. How are you? Oh, hello, dear. I'm fine. And you? Very good. Can I come and visit you sometime, so we can continue our chat? Oh, I don't know, dear. I am still not feeling very well. I assure you, it will only be for a few minutes. No, I don't think today is good. 
My therapist instructed me not to be in contact with anyone. Oh, I see. I will call back later. Please take care of yourself, Ms. Lucan. Thank you, dear. It is very kind of you. Bye. Goodbye. I wonder if there's anything I can do to make her feel more comfortable. Hmm. Maybe I should invite Larissa somewhere she'll feel comfortable. I don't need to talk to him right now. ask you a few more questions. Sure. Does this mean the thing store in the pyramid will be closing down? It's one of my favorite stores. No need to panic, Officer Wallace. The store in the pyramid will remain open. How can you be so sure? According to the franchise agreement, the store in the pyramid will stay open under new management. As Mr. Bogdanov's lawyer, is it your responsibility to settle his accounts? Yes, it is. Does he have a lot to inherit? The franchise will be taken over by the corporation. I am not sure which institution will be inheriting his other belongings, since his death is still being investigated. I will not have access to his will or his bank accounts until the GPSN is done. Was Mr. Bogdanov involved in any other business ventures? Yes, he was. What can you tell me about these ventures? He had a partnership with an artist named Pierre Deville. What did this partnership involve? I believe they were partners in an art consultancy venture. And was this venture profitable as well? I believe it was. Did you ever meet this partner, Mr. Deville? No, I did not. Mr. Anderson, I think I have all the information I need from you. You've been a great help. Thank you. You're welcome. PA, access GPSN census database and add Pierre Deville's address to my navigation map. So this is Mr. DeVille's house. Greetings. This is the home of Pierre DeVille. How may I help you? This is Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. Inform Mr. DeVille that he has a visitor. Please hold. Thank you for your cooperation. Please proceed inside. My, oh my, what a messy place. Hey, you don't call me anymore. Is it so difficult to open your PA and select me from the contact list? Sorry, Sandra. This case is draining all my energy. I know. Well, I'm going to treat you to dinner tonight. Okay? What's the occasion? My birthday was three months ago. I know that. I want to hear the latest about your case, that's all. Oh, I see. Are you trying to bribe a peace officer? Yes, I am. Well, at least you're honest. You know me, babe. Around eight at the cafe? Sure. See ya. Those 
Those are historic firearms. Each must be at least 100 years old. A laser-aimed pistol. Those were so popular with the rebels during the Great Economic War. Hmm. He's at the bottom of our economic pyramid. Just like Bogdanov. Mr. DeVille. Hey, are you? I'm Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. I'm a peace officer. You are? Why are you looking for me? I'm here in an official capacity. I need to ask you some questions regarding a case. Well, I'm awfully busy. Can it wait? I'm afraid it cannot wait. May I sit down? Okay. Suit yourself. This will only take a few minutes, Mr. DeVille. The name is Pierre. Okay. Pierre, and you can call me Phoenix. How did you meet Vasily Bogdanov? A mutual friend introduced us. I designed things, you know? What kind of things? Things like the things here, and things like the things at the thing store. What? I think I missed something there. There is nothing to miss. Just look around this room. These things are all my creations. So you design items to be sold at the thing store? Yeah. I mean, I sort of do. I sense a little bit of wishful thinking there. Well, let's just say... Vasily and I have an understanding. He is one of the very few people who have the ability to appreciate my art. I see. Well, I regret to tell you that he won't be able to appreciate your art anymore. Why? Did that fat wanker skip town with the money? As a matter of fact, he did. And never to come back. What do you mean? He's my partner and we've got a business to run. Not anymore, Pierre. Mr. Bogdanov is dead. So, how would you describe your working relationship with Mr. Bogdanov? Whoa, whoa! Did you just say Vasily is dead? You heard me right. Oh, that's too bad. We had great plans for our business. I'm sorry about your loss, Pierre. So, how did it happen? He must have had a heart attack or something. What makes you say that? You know, he was on the heavy side and all. Actually, Mr. Bogdanov was murdered. He was murdered? Where? In the port city of Odessa. Wow. What was he doing in Japan? I said Odessa, not Okinawa. It's a port city in the Russian rogue state. <laughs> I knew that. I was just testing your geography, Phoenix. <laughs> right. So, how would you describe your working relationship? Well, I guess you could say we got along pretty well, considering all our differences. What kind of differences? Well, for one thing, he was quite a bit older, and he seemed to have come from a much different background. I don't know. Just a feeling I have. You're right, he was indeed from a different background. 
and he had a strange attitude towards women. With his accent and all, I can tell a true Scandinavian when I see one. But Mr. Bogdanov wasn't Scandinavian. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> Where'd you say he was from? I haven't told you yet. Would you like to know? Sure. Surprise me. Mr. Bogdanov was an immigrant from Russia. No shit. Hmm. Now that I think about it, he was a bit roguish. So he never mentioned that he was an immigrant? Nope. Never said anything about Russia to me. Pierre, I think I gathered enough information from you for the time being. Maybe we can continue our conversation later. Sure. My goodness, this guy is so awful. I don't think I could have tolerated any more of him. A message from Jean-Michel. I haven't heard from him in a while. Hmm. He must be needy or something. Otherwise, he wouldn't invite me. Whatever. Finally, somebody that can be sensible. Hi. I need to speak to Ms. Stavropoulos. And you are? I am Senior Officer Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. Officer Wallace, unfortunately, Ms. Stavropoulos is at class right now, and she is not to be disturbed until her prep period. What is a prep period? It is the time when our teachers have a short break from their teaching responsibilities. And when is her next prep period? Let's see. Ms. Stavropoulos will be free in 90 minutes. Would you like to wait, or shall I take a message? Okay, I would like to wait. Please take a seat. Officer Wallace? Yes. Ms. Stavropoulos is on her way to see you. Thank you. Hello, Katie. How are you doing now? I'm doing better, I guess. I'm still shaken. Can I ask you some more questions? Certainly. How would you describe your relationship with Mr. Bogdanov? We had an intimate relationship. I loved him very much. Despite the quarrels? The quarrels only started about a month ago. Was it your choice to cool off the relationship? Yes, I felt I had to cool off the relationship. Because he was treating me so badly. In what way, Katie? He would behave completely irrationally. I was beginning to think he was psychologically imbalanced. In your opinion, are the imbalances connected to his past? Oh, I don't know. He did not talk a lot about his past. It seemed to me like he wanted to forget his Russian past. He was desperately trying to fit in better here, in the Union. You mean, he hated his past? No, actually he shared very fond memories of his childhood. But it seemed to me that his young adult life must have been difficult. What can you tell me about his childhood? Vasily had a very strong attachment to his bio-grandparents. Apparently, he was raised by them, and he loved his bio-grandparents deeply. I believe his bio-parents died during a savage riot. Oh, must have been very hard for him. Imagine losing your bio-parents in absence of a sound educational system. Who would take care of you? I guess he was lucky that his bio-grandparents took care of him. Of course, 
It could never compare to the care from a qualified professional in our CDCs. In the rogue states, the school teachers are only responsible for the academic education. They have nothing to do with the children's love, belonging, and esteem needs. I think Vasily was very fortunate that he did not develop neurotic behavior during his childhood, in absence of qualified care. Have you had a serious relationship with a Russian before? No. Vasily was my first Russian partner. Oh, I loved his accent. Did you go out in public a lot? Sure. He took me to all the popular restaurants. Which one was his favorite? He loved the Italian restaurant in the Pyramid. So, you say Mr. Bogdanov did not develop neurotic behavior during his time in Russia. But you also mentioned his irrational behavior. How can you be sure his irrationality did not have neurotic roots? I'm sure because he behaved as a rational man until recently. Is that enough to tell you that it was not neurosis related? As a professional with a lot of training and experience in human behavior, I very well know the symptoms of neurotic tendencies. And my Vasily was not neurotic. Then how would you describe his behavior with your professional expertise? Unfortunately, my professionalism does not allow me to make such comments on adults of Vasily's age. This is clearly not my domain. I'm sorry, of course not. If there are no further questions, I have to get back to my children. No questions at this time, Katie. Thank you. Again, I'm very sorry for your loss. It is a loss for our entire society. A precious citizen, a member of our union has been taken from us by a barbaric act. Poor Cotty. The more I behave in an understanding way, the more she becomes emotional. Hmm. I know it's late, but I need to report my findings to Chief Morrison. You better have a good reason for bringing me here this late. I only have a little time. Continue. I found this digital diary, Chief. It doesn't appear to be working, but I believe it belonged to Mr. Bogdanov. What do you mean? Where did you find it? Well, this diary was hidden inside an ornament in the thing store, but its activation key was in Mr. Bogdanov's safe. What ornament? What activation key? Oh, whatever. I'll get it checked out. Alethea Cordoba told me that someone who was impersonating a peace officer had already been at the thing store, and this impersonator asked her questions about Bogdanov. A peace officer impersonator? How bizarre. You'd better find out who this person is. Actually, I got the description of this impersonator, Chief. Good. Check our census databases and let me know if you find something. Will do. Douglas Anderson doesn't think Bogdanov was involved in an NGO duty. He believes Bogdanov didn't live in the Union long enough to feel such a social debt. That's interesting. I met Pierre Deville, Chief. He's the art consultancy business partner of Bogdanov. You mean he was? That's what I meant. He was. Pierre Deville told me that a mutual friend had introduced him to Bogdanov. Apparently, Pierre designs things similar to the ones in the thing store. Surprisingly, he had no idea that Bogdanov was dead. Julio keeps sending me useless reports about Bogdanov's past, but no relevant information. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Kati Stavropoulos told me that Bogdanov was cared for by his late grandparents during his childhood. Apparently, he loved them deeply. 
According to Cotty, Bogdanov was very fortunate that he did not develop neurotic behavior during this period, in absence of any qualified care. Phoenix, during the Bogdanov investigation, you may request financial search or questioning warrants during our meetings. Okay. However, I want you to be careful about for whom you request a warrant. I will only accept your request if you can convince me soundly. Understood? Yes, Chief. I have nothing further to mention at this time. Welcome to the Court Network. Tonight we continue broadcasting live the landmark case of Simpson versus Kane. I can't go out in a uniform. It would be so politically incorrect. What should I wear? Hmm. I need to get going, or else I'm going to be late for my meeting with Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hey, girl. Where have you been? Have you been working too hard again? No. Well, maybe. A little. Ugh, I don't know. How are you? Well, I'm great, but you look exhausted. And you could definitely use a drink, so let's order something. That's a fantastic idea. I'll have a mind-altering drink. How about a La Jolla Ocean Breeze? That sounds great. I've had a rough day. Sandra, I need your opinion on something. Well... I'm not one of those judges on your court network, but I can try to act like one. Well, quit it. Kati Stavropoulos is not telling me everything I need to know about Bogdanov. Maybe she doesn't know what you need to know. I think she does. But she's hiding behind professionalism and telling me adults are not her domain. Maybe you should nonchalantly apply a little pressure to get her talking. Pressure? How can I possibly pressure a teacher from the CDC? If Cotty were to complain, Chief would fry my ass. That may be so, but Cotty, for reasons beyond my understanding, loved Bogdanov very much, right? That's right. So maybe you can corner her with the fact that Bogdanov is dead and his murderers are at large. Hmm, that might work. Won't hurt to give it a try. Sandra, what do you know about WEMA? WEMA as in World Image Makers Association? Yes, that's the one. They are an independent power group with very strong political connections. Why do you ask? Well, I went to see Bogdanov's image makers, Roger Arnett and... That stinky immigrant was seeing Roger Arnett? Evidently he was. But I wasn't even allowed to speak with Mr. Arnett because his abrasive assistant wouldn't let me go anywhere near him. She even implied that I could be sued for violating my own company rules. Can you believe that? Oh, yes. I can believe that. Wima has very strong ties to the GPSN. I never understood the relationship between the two, but I know that image makers from Wima are playing an important role in our society. I know that. But it doesn't give this assistant the right to be politically incorrect. Well, my dear, get used to it. All of those associated with Wima are known to be rather politically incorrect. I met this 
awful guy today. Did he bite you? Yeah, I got his bite marks all over my butt. No, he did not bite me. But just because I went to his apartment and had nice manners, he thought I was his groupie. Sweet. Who is this hunk? Some artist named Pierre Deville. Never heard of him. Did you put him in his place? Of course I did. That's my girl. I went to my old school today. Every time I go there, I feel so weird. Why do you feel weird? It's just that I have flashbacks of unpleasant memories. Oh, sweetie. We all have to deal with those. Just push them out of your mind. You make it sound so easy. Well, all right. I guess I did not have a rough childhood like you. Anyway, why did you go there? To meet this teacher, who was the murdered immigrant's love interest. Ooh, now you've got my attention. Did she give you any vivid details of their lustful encounters? You know that kind of information is confidential. I can't share any of the details with you. Come on, Phoenix. I've heard you go into confidential details before. Why is this case any different? It just is. Oh, it's getting late, Sandra. I need to leave now. What's the rush? I have to meet Jean-Michel for dinner. Is that right? So, how are things going with the tall Marine? Fine, I suppose. You say that about all the men you date. You know, you gotta go into these relationships with a positive attitude. I know, but I can't help it. Maybe there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you, Phoenix. You're just taking life too seriously. I'm not taking life too seriously. I just can't seem to find the right partner. What are you talking about, Phoenix? What's this right partner crap? Didn't they teach you at school? Men and women are selfish creatures, and there is no such thing as the right partner. Every partner is right, provided he or she has a healthy genetic makeup. But I haven't felt comfortable with any of the men I've seen yet. They just don't feel right for some reason. I think you're expecting too much. They're just men. Go on. Have some fun with John Michelle. Hi. What's up? Starving. Let's order something. How about your favorite pizza? Sure. Activity on the border lately? Nope. All quiet in the Eastern Front. Are you expecting anything? Negative. We are not expecting any activity in the short, medium, and in the long term. You're that sure? Of course. Who can challenge the mighty Union Army? <laughs> that sounds like a Holovision quiz show question. Well, you know what I mean. Seriously, from a military point of view, the rogue states are weaker than ever. I'm working on a new case. What kind of case? One of your boring cases against scientific living? Oh, it's probably nothing on the military standard. Come on, tell me what it is. Embezzlement? No, less interesting. Kleptomania! What? Please tell me. It's a murder. Yeah, right. And I'm the suspect, right? Why not? You're certainly capable as a Marine. Hey, wait a minute. Being capable is one thing. And committing is... You are serious, aren't you? Who's been murdered? A Union citizen is murdered in your favorite rogue state, soldier boy. In Russia? Tell me what's going on. Can't tell you. Well, maybe if you are good to me tonight. I shall do anything you want, your highness. We shall see that. So, Your Highness, 
Your place or mine. As if we have a choice. Of course we do. We can always go to my place in the military area. Your place? Your tiny room, you mean? There isn't enough space for two people there. Well, I can always arrange a suite in the officer's quarters. No, thank you. I think I prefer my own place. As you wish, master. Stop calling me that. I am not your master. Come on, let's go and have a good time. <laughs>